Hi everyone, my name is Ron Leite and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Mini. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. Today we are going to be talking about detached macros in Autrix Designer. In the last videos we spoke about standard macros, which are a way to package your workflow and use it in many different places. We talked about match macros, which will run over your records that you selected in the control parameter. And now we are going to be talking about iterative macros, which will run a set amount of times or until a condition is met. Here I have an example of an XML file that I want to break down the information. You can see that I can do this in three ways. First, I can treat every parsing here using many different XML parse tools and then just use a transpose, a select, a data clean and a filter to get my results. I can also treat them line by line to get my lines here and use the iterative macro. Here the logic behind breaking down the information is using a parse tool, a transpose, a select, a data cleansing and then a filter to remove what's empty because empty values shouldn't be used. Now inside the macro what I did was I copied the input file and just converted it into a macro input and changed the name here to data input. Also select show field map so the user can select the column he wants to use. Here I have the parse tool that will get my root child values and outer XML, the transpose to transpose the data the data cleansing and then here is a new block. This block is a filter that will remove anything that is the same from field one and value. Why is that? When I use the transpose tool, if I check the last line, I have my clinical study here and also my clinical study here. As the iterative macro you run over and over again, if I don't remove this last line, it will never end because it will always be breaking down my initial file. So I have to remove this by using this filter. If you have a file that you want to parse or if you have a file that you want to use in Tetra Macro, make sure that you are not submitting the same information, the same original information back to the macro or it will never have a stop condition. Now I have the same select here to remove the first field, I have the filter to remove empty files and then a filter to get what doesn't contain outer XML in its name. Here. I have my output and another output. Why is that? Every time you use a iterative macro, you need at least two outputs. One for the results and one for the iterative output. This output here is the iterative one. So every time I run this workflow, it will run and give my results and it run and when it gets here, it will feed back this information. Some people like putting this right next to the input to know that it's the iterative output. But let's just leave it as is for now. Here the logic is, if I have my information broken down, it's my results. If I still have outer XML in its name, I still have to break the information. But sometimes I have the broken down information and the same information here. So I just use a formula to remove outer XML from the name and then I join to check what's already parsed and what still needs to be parsed. The select here is just rename the column to field1 as the input is using field1 as its name. Now if I run this workflow here, you see that I have 12 lines that still need to be parsed. How can I debug or how can I see the next iteration? I can just copy this and paste it here or I can copy everything, create a new workflow, run it, I can come here, copy this, come here and paste it here, let me just erase it before. Now if I run this, I'll have different outputs and also more lines here that still needs to be parsed. 
I want to see the next iteration, I can come here again, copy and paste, run, go here to the browse tool, copy the records and paste it in the input here, erase everything before, and run again. Here I still have one more line, if I want to check it again, I can come here, paste it, run. Copy this, come here, erase everything, paste it, and done. And now I don't have anything here and I have my parse data in this output. So one, two, three, four iterations I need to break down my file. Also inside here we have to configure inside workflow that we want a iterative macro. By default, Alteryx won't know, like for example the batch macro where we add a control parameter, Alteryx won't know that we want to use a iterative macro. So come here in the workflow setting, click on a blank place, click on workflow and change it to iterative macro. Before we go forward, we also need to come here in interface designer, settings and use the iteration input and iteration output. It's also very useful to name your inputs and outputs when using an iterative macro so you know what you're dealing with inside this window. So here the iteration input is my data input, my iteration output is my move iteration output. I can set a maximum number of iterations here, but as we are using this filter, we will have a condition after four iterations as we have seen above here. I can also change what happens when the maximum number is hit, I can show an error, I can just warn, and I can output leftover records. The output mode can also be changed based on the name, position, or who have the same output schema. Here I just select position, but as we are using the transpose tool, most of the options would work. So just try and check out your file what is working. I'll hide this and go back, let me just save this, press ok, and here you can see that I just need to select the field I want to parse, if I run the workflow, I have my all my lines here, and in the i, which is the iteration output, I don't have anything left, because I could parse everything. Now, another way to check where your parsing is or how many iterations you have, you can use a formula tool here, create a new column called iteration and then use engine dot iteration number and here we will add plus one because it starts at zero so plus one it's easier to read. Now if I save this and go back to my original workflow and run it again you see that I have my iteration number besides my data. So those lines here, let me just make this bigger. Those lines here were on my first iteration, my second iteration, my third iteration, and my fourth iteration. This is very useful when handling a lot of iterations and you want to know how much time it's taking or how many iterations Alteryx took to get your data done. So you just add a formula and use the engine iteration number. So that's it for test your macros in Alteryx Designer. Thank you for watching and have a great day. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted. Thank you for watching.